After a soft reboot with Assassin's Creed Origins and the insanely huge Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Assassin's Creed Valhalla has burst onto the scene in 2020, being many people's first next-gen game and netting some of the biggest sales figures in the franchise's history. Turns out we all love the combo of Black Flag-style sea shanty sing-alongs mixed with Viking raids and brutal combat the result being another massive win for Ubisoft. Venturing deeper into RPG territory than ever before, and honestly barely even being an Assassin's Creed game anymore, we still have one hell of an open world action role-playing game with an obscene amount to see, do or cut in half. As you'll no doubt be spending tens if not hundreds of hours exploring Valhalla's take on Norway and England, I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and this is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, 11 tips and tricks the game doesn't tell you. Number 11. Use your bow to find enemy and boss weak points. With the selection of melee weapons out there, it's easy to get caught up in the world of hand-to-hand -hand combat. The importance of ranged combat in Valhalla cannot be overstated though, and those more interested in lopping heads off are missing out on a pivotal in-game ability. See, pulling back on your bowstring will actually highlight an enemy's weak points in orange, and if you're skilled enough to hit them, you'll take out a large chunk of that enemy's stamina. Shots like these will cause the enemy to be stunned, letting you run in for a finisher or to deal significant damage to a boss. Number 10. Flighting unlocks dialogue options. Flighting is something new that Valhalla has brought to the Assassin's Creed table and consists of having words with a friend or foe that match the rhythm, rhyme and tone of what was previously said. Yes, it's straight up Viking rap battles and that's pretty cool. Now this might sound like a silly minigame but try it once and you'll be hooked forever. And as fun as it is, actually winning these challenges is incredibly important to the future of your adventure. Turns out the more you win the better your charisma level will be. And with any fully formed RPG, your charisma level directly determines the specific dialogue options that you'll have when talking to NPCs. Negotiating a treaty or talking your way into an enemy camp is impossible without some training, so take every opportunity to flight whenever you can. Number 9. You need crewmates when raiding. You can't build your settlement from the ground up without first acquiring some building materials. And since you're a viking, what better way to do this than by plundering the various enemy outposts spread across England. Just keep in mind that although you can clear an enemy encampment on your own, you will have to bring along your crew to receive the building materials themselves. Also, you need your crew's help to break down certain barred doors to claim the wealth inside. If you've seen any of those gold icons locked away inside a house with no entrance, it's your crew that will help you get inside. Lastly, if you see a crewmate rolling around on the ground, be sure to walk up to them and when prompted, help them up. The more the merrier when it comes to plundering villages. Number 8. How to put out fire since raiding is all about showing power and conquering enemy outposts, there's gonna be a hell of a lot of fire involved. Funnily enough, fire seems to be far more damaging to Eivor than any amount of arrows to the back, so just watch your footing when fighting to victory. Literally everything will set this guy fully ablaze just like it did back in Assassin's Creed Origins and Odyssey, and I don't know what it is about this franchise's obsession with full bodies burning. Anyway, if you find yourself on fire, keep in mind that you do have two options to put it out again. First up is just looking for a near body of water, then jumping in and watching the fire go out immediately. Second is holding the dodge button to tuck and roll. Again, this is just like Origins and Odyssey, but it gets the job done. Number 7. You can visit Norway whenever you want. The beginnings of Assassin's Creed Valhalla take place in Norway, which offers quite a few unique weapons and abilities that will help you on your journey. However, with such an engaging story to get lost in, it's easy to end up in England in the blink of an eye, feeling quite unprepared and wishing that you could return home. If you're anything of a completionist or just want to go back to Norway, you don't need to reset your game to get back to that first area. Instead, all you need to do is access the game menu, open up the world map and select Atlas. This will allow you to select between the countries of England and Norway, traveling between regions in an instant. It's a good thing too as there are tons of challenging fights locked away in Norway that you'll have to explore to find. Yes, I'm looking at you, Eric Loyal Skull. Number 6. Reset your skills to maximize loadouts. The skill tree you have access to in Assassin's Creed Valhalla is huge, with each unlock revealing further options available to make Eivor into a formidable foe. For those who end up getting bogged down in various choices and feeling like they're locked to specific playstyles, no skill choice in Valhalla is permanent. Turns out if you investigate the skill tree and the options therein, you can reset individual skills, alongside the entire skill tree if you choose. You'll also notice here that the further you move down a path, the better acquainted you'll be with the armor associated with that path. So if you've kitted Eivor out by following the path of the raven, but now find yourself with a killer set of bear armor, don't worry. 
you can totally reset it. Inside the skill tree, make all of the requisite changes and maximize your loadout. Following a different path is as easy as that, so just experiment as much as you want. Number 5. How to find locked door keys By exploring both known and far off lands, you'll come into contact with quite a few locked doors. However, don't fret as every lock has its key, and the keys are never too far from the locks they fit. Finding these keys will require some investigation though, and it's here where your trusty Raven Sinan can help in the search. By giving you a bird's eye view, you'll be able to detect whether nearby enemies are actually carrying this specific key. If so, a quick assassination is all that's stopping you from taking a look behind that door. Another solution is to keep an eye out for notes, which will often suggest where the location of the key is in the form of a riddle. Finally, if there are no enemies or notes, then just look for the nearest quest giver. The reward for whatever this simplistic quest will be is almost always the key you need. Number 4. Barred Doors Are Puzzles Although barred doors are similar to locked ones in that they prevent us from sinking our teeth into the loot therein, they could not be more different. You can identify these doors by using Odin's Sight, which will paint the wooden bar red and show just how the door has been latched shut from the inside. Once you've confirmed that you're dealing with a particular barred door, take a look around the homestead and look for anything that might stand out. You should think of barred doorways as puzzles, and they require finding an alternative way to reach the treasure inside. This might be in the form of a hole in the homestead's roof, or a reed-like surface which can be shot with your bow to make a gap. Number 3. Secret Entrances Explained Secret entrances have made a return in Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and as you travel further into Norway and beyond, you'll notice that getting into them gets a lot more difficult. More often than not, the presence of a secret entrance means that you'll have to interact with the environment in some way or other to find it. This can be in the form of shooting some hanging crates to crash through a floor, or exploding a weakened surface by throwing a red vase through it. Make a point of unlocking the incendiary powder trap bow ability as soon as possible as this will allow you to destroy these surfaces without having to find anything else. Number 2. Beware of high-level roaming enemies By now you'll know that the various regions associated in Assassin's Creed Valhalla have power levels associated with them. This is a useful tool as it shows just how powerful you should be before tackling the challenges those regions will present, so pay attention before running ahead into unexplored territory. Although most enemies do adhere to the region's difficulty curve, the same can't be said for certain high-level enemies that kinda live by their own rules. A great example here are the roaming religious zealots, whose location and power levels can be spotted on Eivor's map. Since the power levels of these particular enemies are often much higher than the region they're travelling through, be sure to pay attention to where they are before starting a quest. There's nothing worse than being surprised by an impossible enemy when you're well into a quest, so wait for them to pass before getting things going. Unless you really want a ridiculously hard challenge. And number 1. Claim Your Free Bow from Ubisoft Connect since AC Valhalla runs off Ubisoft Connect, be sure to check in on available bonuses every now and then. Some can totally help early on in your full playthrough. A great example of this is the legendary Spartan Bow, which can be purchased for only 100 U points. As you earn U points for completing basic challenges anyway, this fancy bow is basically free, and it makes all the difference, especially at the beginning. And those are various tips and tricks for Assassin's Creed Valhalla that the game doesn't tell you. Let me know your favourites down in the comments below, and please check out the What Culture Gaming podcast. For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com, and I'll catch you soon.